Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange. Today I'm here to do more science fiction and fantasy reviews. This time I'm talking about a lot of new 2022 releases, including a new sci-fi favorite. So if you, like me, are always searching for that next amazing read, I have one for you here, something really unique and also dark. So if that sounds good, let's get started. First up, we have August Kitko and the Mechas from Space by Alex White, this book that I received for review from Orbit Books. And this follows a pianist called the Gus, who is this famous jazz pianist who is playing at the end of the world. However, in what should be this melancholy, sad day of ending things, instead these vanguards, which are basically big mechas, come and rescue and steal him away, and then it brings him into a larger adventure to possibly try to save humanity and just the story goes from there, let's say. This is a book that is getting lots of buzz online, so I was very excited to check out a new space opera. The author is known for writing queer fiction, and you definitely see some great diversity within this story here. And I will say that I really appreciated the story, but it was not entirely to my taste. And that is something that just depends on what you like in your science fiction. And I will say that the tone of this book is just lighter than the kinds of science fiction I tend to prefer or gravitate to, or simply the kinds of science fiction that become five-star reads for me. This book is light, but I wouldn't necessarily call it funny. And if anything, it's surprisingly light considering it begins at, again, the end of the world. But this book takes some really fun twists and turns. It has some good character moments and action. And the pacing is really good that it just flies along. I I like this book. I liked all the elements in it, but it just didn't fully grab me. That being said, I've seen plenty of other people who have absolutely loved this one, and I think, again, it just really depends on what makes a book a favorite for you. So if you're interested in that type of story, I think this one is very accessible, even for those of you that don't read a lot of science fiction, because while it is set in a far-flung future, it feels very accessible, very down-to-earth. It's very character-focused, and so really you could almost forget that's taking place in the future and just feels like it could take place today in a lot of ways. All that being said, if you want a book that is fun, a little bit glittery, and a just a fun mecha adventure, this is one that you may want to check out for yourself. Then we have Ymir by Rich Larson. This is another book that I received for review from Orbit Books. This is a sci-fi standalone that follows a person named Yorick who is returning back to his home world of Ymir after being gone for years. He is very reluctantly coming back, but his employer has called him there to investigate this vicious machine that is threatening the mines. And when he's there, he possibly encounters his brother, who is the reason that he had to leave the planet in the first place. This book is a very loose retelling of Beowulf. And I'm saying this as someone who has been told that from the marketing, but I will be honest, I have never read the classic of Beowulf or have seen any adaptation, and I'm really not familiar with the story, so I cannot personally speak as to what those aspects are. I thought about looking them up ahead of time, but I decided that I wanted to experience the story without knowing those details to see if it holds up without that comparison, and I will say that it absolutely did. I do not know what the comparison to Beowulf is, but if you just want an amazing, dark, unique story, this is one that you have to check out. This is a new favorite of mine for 2022. This book is just so different. So first off, I want to say that you learn very quickly that York is not human. And this is a wonderful surprise because I'm so used to, even in future stories that involve aliens, the protagonist, the main character, the perspective that we follow is always a human. And so I like that York is just very different. He has mandibles, he has different parts, he is just very other and very foreign. And just like him, his planet is very different as well. So it has a different climate. We have very different technology and it's not just human technology that has been advanced a little bit. As I so often see in a lot of like near future stories, instead this one feels far flung out in a future or another galaxy or somewhere far away. And it just feels so different. I love the world building. It was rich and well developed. Again, this is only standalone and it's not actually incredibly long, but the amount of world building that is packed into the story is incredible. I really like this one. And as I mentioned, in terms of tone, unlike the last book I talked about, this one is a bit dark and gritty and grim. And I love that feel. It's just my type of story. It's a kind of story that I really connect with and it was foreboding and I just didn't know what was gonna happen and I was just completely hooked into the story from the first chapter 
all the way to the end, which is a great feeling, especially lately. Honestly, I've been a little bit slumpy with my reading, but this one completely delivered. I do want to mention that I've read this author previously before, as many of you have, and I will say that while his previous book read a little bit young to me, this one is 100% adult. It does not feel like a YA crossover in any way, and so if you'd like your books to be very adult, mature, and have the depth that you look for in your adult fiction, you will definitely get this one here. And if you can't tell, really enjoyed this one, really recommend it, and hope that more people pick this one out because in my opinion it's a bit of a sleeper hit and I don't think it'll stay that way for long. Highly recommend this one to you all. Then we have January 15th by Rachel Swartzky and this is a Tor.com novella and this story is set in a future where there is the inclusion of a basic income for all residents of this nation regardless of their previous or other income sources and so it's based off a very interesting political idea and concept that is often talked about today the idea that uh, society just in general will largely improve if everyone is just given this base minimum income and so within the story we are set in a world where everyone receives this income on January 15th hence the title and so within this little novella we follow several different perspectives and basically this book serves as a thought experiment to explore what would happen if this concept was actually put into practice so we follow a young mother who has escaped her abusive spouse and is off with their children we follow a journalist who who was previously investigating this concept and is now living and experiencing it themselves. And then we also follow a rich teenager who is someone who really doesn't need the money and so uses the chance to just waste the money as extravagantly as possible. I have been interested in picking this one up because I have several friends that really are interested in the concept of bringing in a universal basic income. And so I really wanted to see how the theory would be set out in practice. And I will say that while I like the fact that this book is meant to be a thought experiment, I don't really feel like it delivered any of the conclusions that I would have liked to see. We follow characters, but it's on such a micro intimate level that I really didn't get to see the larger economic implications. And this book was just almost too narrow in scope to actually draw any conclusions after reading this. So I like the concept, didn't really like the execution. I just don't think that it really lived up to the potential of what this story could have been. Now switching over to backlist science fiction, I also want to talk about Chalky by John Wyndham. And this is a very short novel slash novella that follows a family where one of the young children has an imaginary friend. This friend just seems a little bit different and the family doesn't really know what to think of them. Basically, the child starts asking questions on behalf of their imaginary friend that just don't really make sense for a child to be asking. They're kind of above their level of education and so the questions are very philosophical and they start to wonder if there's more going on. They kind of seek out help to find out what is happening and of course the story goes from there. I will admit I was really first intrigued by the story because it sounded like a really interesting take on a horror trope that I really love to see. I love imaginary friends, but I normally see that concept explored in horror novels. So the fact that John Wyndham, an author known for writing science fiction, was taking this on made me really curious. I will say I think it's worth knowing going into that yes, there is a sci-fi or speculative element to the story. If you're expecting this story to get weird and creepy, it gets a little bit weird perhaps, but not creepy. But that being said, I really enjoyed where the story went. I think that it's easy to get spoiled online. I kind of figured out what was happening, but regardless, it was just enjoyable to get to an ending and to see where the story went. So I will say that the story is not incredibly hard to predict, but it's a really good smart narrative that has some really good reflection on humanity and other things that I don't want to spoil. And I really enjoyed it. And I will say that this book feels a little bit underhyped. I've of course read John Wyndham before, but I've never heard of this one. And so I'm really glad I got a chance to check it out. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone who enjoys more classic science fiction. It is smart, easy to fly through and a nice quick read. Then I read Road Marks by Roger Jelensky, and this is a really unique backlist title that I haven't heard too much about. The basic concept on a really simplified level is that we follow a group of people that are traveling along this road, but this road is just a bit more almost philosophical or 
transcendent because it basically allows him to travel through time, but I don't mean that in a really literal way. This book was really, really cool, but I will be fully honest that when I was reading it, I thought that the book was really, really smart, but it felt too smart for me. I do want to reread this book because I'll be honest, I don't really feel like I got it. And again, it was almost so cerebral that I felt like I was reading the book too literally. And so if you have read this book, I would love to hear your thoughts down below what you think about it because I feel like it's a really smart book, but it felt like it was too smart for me. Please let me know if anyone else has ever had that experience reading a book. I feel like these are the kind of science fiction books that tend to turn people off from the genre because they feel a little bit intimidated by them. I will always admit to you, um, if I don't understand something or if something is a little bit heady for me, I always acknowledge that I don't have a science background, but I love science fiction anyway and I always hope that it will make me a smarter reader and hope to grow my knowledge and kind of expand my thinking as I f basically bumble through this genre. Now switching over to fantasy, I want to talk about In the Shadow of Lightning by Brian McKellen. This is the first book in a new fantasy series by this well-known author. This is my first time reading by him. This is a book that I received for review from Tor Books and basically it follows a man who has been exiled from his home. However, when his mother is mysteriously killed or murdered, he goes back to investigate what happened and take his place in his society. I will say that the concept or setup to this book is not one that I've never read before, but regardless of a previous video where I talked about my complaints with books not feeling fresh, this was not a complaint I had with this one. Despite being a book or a story rather that I was familiar with, this book was still very interesting to read. I will say that the prose I thought were really strong. I liked the characters. It was a story that again, I've seen the pieces of the story played out in in various ways, but I was still interested to see how this particular story was going to play out. And as I said, it's the first book in a long running series or at least a trilogy or so forth. So I'm very excited to get more from this series, more from this author. And I think most of you are familiar with Brian McKellen because he's done previous work that has involved a hard magic system. And so yes, once again, he is bringing that back. As someone who really likes very technical, hard science and fiction, I do tend to be drawn towards fantasy that also has some very hard hard rules to the magic and I definitely got that there. Within this book you have this magic system that involves what they call glass and right at the beginning of the story they have kind of a rule book explaining the basic concept of how this works and as soon as there is like rules and guidelines explained within the story and like in the addendums I am happy so I really enjoyed this one. It's definitely a hard magic system in the vein of some like Brandon Sanderson which I believe was his teacher and so if you like that kind of thing this is definitely a new one to check out. Again, I just felt like it had all the elements that I really enjoy in fantasy stories. And so yeah, this book totally delivered for me. Definitely one of the better 2022 releases I've read so far. And finally, I read the companion series to Crucial Start, the first book being Crucial's Scion, if I'm saying that right. A few of you helped coach me when I brought this book up before, followed by Crucial's Justice, and then finally Crucial's Mercy. I did all three books as a buddy read with my friend who sent these for me to read and review with her. And so I really enjoyed the first books in this series. I will be honest, I did not love this companion series as much. These books follow actually a male perspective, and I won't spoil who, that is introduced in the first book and I remember finding the character in the first book really whiny and annoying so unfortunately when I found out that they were the main character in this follow-up trilogy I wasn't too impressed so I'll be honest in the first book I found them really really annoying my enjoyment of the book once again picked up in book two just like with the first trilogy in Kushal's Justice and I think it was the fact that I kind of accepted that the main character was annoying and I made a choice to decide that I wasn't actually supposed to like them and once I started thinking of them as an unlikely character and the fact that perhaps I wasn't actually supposed to love them and instead just enjoy them making terrible mistakes and doing all sorts of annoying things, I kind of started to enjoy the story. There were some choices in this book that devastated me and I was still lingering on to that. The last book, I'll be honest, was really slow paced, really passive and just felt like one long conclusion to what happened in book two. So I didn't really love this one but I am still glad that I got to check out this series. I do still intend to check out the final companion trilogy that is available, so I'll be reading that soon. But yeah, if you are intrigued in this world, I definitely recommend going back to the first trilogy, Crucial Start, and whether or not you pick up the later one just depends on your enjoyment of the world and just want to spend more time with the characters, so you decide. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to hear of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out? The correct answer is that you are planning on reading Ymir because I think it's fantastic 
and I suspect a lot of you will enjoy it as well, especially for those of you that said my last SFF wrap up that you also are looking for books that are fresh and different and unique. That book delivers there. Otherwise, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of sci-fi, fantasy, adult horror, thrillers, and true crime. And if you want to help me out more, you can give me a thumbs up, you can share this around online, you can drop an emoji, even if it's just a little alien or a spaceship. And if you want to hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.